All right, everybody, I'm excited to be here with you today talking about retail arbitrage strategies to double your inventory within 30 days. And yes, this is a big goal to have. And I promise you that I will do my best to fill in over the next 60 minutes or so, so much content that you can take action on immediately that will help you build up your inventory. Now, obviously, I don't know how much inventory you have. If you've got 500, 1,000, 10,000, and so while doubling your inventory, you know it might not work if you got like 10,000 in stock. But you've, if you have a smaller number of inventory, you might be able to double, maybe even triple your inventory with the things that I'm going to be teaching you. And um, but just know what we're talking about tonight. The main goal is to increase your inventory. The more things that you have to sell that are quality items, um, that are priced to make a profit. The more you're going to make money on Amazon, the more you can build up your income, the more you can snowball your profits into even more profits. And so um, we're going to jump into that uh, in just a second. So just know if you have any questions, put that in the questions area and we'll come to that at the very end of the uh, presentation. And, uh, you know, let's just get right into this. So you might be wondering, who am I? If you have not heard about me or my story, my name is Steven Smotherman. That's me and my three boys. I have four boys. My oldest has grown, uh, but that's the my family taking a vacation last year to the Grand Canyon, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but back in 1998 is when I first started to learn about selling online. I got addicted to buying stuff on eBay. Then I ran out of money, and I needed to get addicted to selling stuff on eBay, and that was a fun little hobby for about a decade or so. But then I found myself in 2011, I was... Freshly divorced, single dad of four kids. I was unemployed and I didn't know how I was going to make any type of money. I'd, I'd lost everything. I was starting over in life. And so I thought, maybe I can figure out a way to make a full time income off of eBay. And that's when I discovered selling via Amazon FBA, knowing that they can hold all my products for me. They'll ship it for me. They'll deal with customer service. They'll deal with returns. You know, sign me up. And so I did. I signed up and within six or seven months, of starting my Amazon business in 2011, I was making a full-time income. In fact, my first full year of Amazon was 2012. And after Q4 of 2012, Amazon actually awarded me uh, with the Top Holiday Seller Award. And that was an award that was given to the sellers that had the top 25% of sales during Q4 for Amazon, but also held high customer service ratings great feedback scores and they awarded me that now 2012 was the last year that they awarded this award and so I, i'm glad i at least got in under the wire um and it was a lot of fun i even have it hung up on my wall over here um I mean, heck, you know here's my award i have it it's fun um it just kind of inspires me to continue to grow my amazon business as best as i can and in 2013 i i uh, married rebecca she became an incredible stepmom but one thing we didn't plan was that she would join my Amazon business. And so she joined my Amazon business. I focused on retail arbitrage. She focused on online arbitrage. And we started to build up our inventory and build up our income. And it's been a lot of fun doing so. And in 2013, you know, a few years, a few months after we got married, she started realizing I was spending a lot of time on Facebook. Can any of you relate? Uh, asking questions, answering questions and stuff. And she's like, you need to start a blog. And that's when I started Full-Time FBA. You can find out more about that, fulltimefba.com. Most of you probably already know about it, but I wanted to make sure everyone did know about it. And um, not only did she join the Amazon business, uh, she also became an incredible stepmom and also uh, helped me out with the blog. I wrote and she edited, and it was it, it was like she proofread. Uh, so she makes me sound a lot smarter than I really am. But that's my little story of how I've been able to make a full-time income with Amazon with retail arbitrage at first, um, and then a couple of years later, adding online arbitrage, and then a couple of years after that, adding wholesale. But we're focusing today on retail arbitrage, and I've got some free gifts for you just for being here right now watching this webinar. If you would like a free sales rank chart, and this is a chart that focuses on all the main Amazon categories and breaks it down into the top 1%, top 3%, 5%, and 10%, so you have an idea that what sales ranks but depending on which category are are the best because a sales rank of 100,000 in books is awesome a sales rank of 100,000 in toys it's 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 pretty good but it's not as good as books 
different categories have different personalities. And to get that sales rank chart, you go to fulltimefba.com forward slash sales rank. I try to update it once a month. Every once in a while, I miss a month because Amazon, you know, kind of glitches and how they uh, provide the numbers for me. Um, but I try to update this about once a month and it's my free gift to you. You can get it fulltimefba.com forward slash sales rank. And I'll give you two more free gifts to just for signing up. I'll give you a free ebook that my wife and I wrote together called Seller Central Tips. It's all about getting the reimbursements you deserve, refunds, and how to deal with Amazon glitches that might not be uh, working in your favor, how to make them work in your favor. And I've got another freebie. It's a quick download for you Amazon FBA beginners, all the main Amazon seller acronyms broken down on a sheet of paper because you're like, what is all this numbers and letters and stuff? What are What's WAGS? What's LTSF? What is TA? What are all these things mean? Uh, we'll break that down for you. So I'm about to go to the next slide. So take a screenshot of this so you can have this fulltimefba.com forward slash sales rank is where you can find it. And if you miss out on this, you're going to get access to the replay. So you can just watch this again later. Let's jump in to retail arbitrage strategies that will help you double your inventory in less than 30 days. So retail arbitrage, most of you know, buying items at retail store for the purpose of selling those items on another platform for a profit. You can find both clearance and full priced items to sell for a profit on Amazon. It's totally legal. Some people still think it's illegal because it's, it's like it can't be this easy, you know, buying stuff for $5, selling it for 20, buying stuff for a dollar, selling it for 15, but it's totally legal. You can find multiples of great products and find replenishable products where you can just continue to go back and find more and more. Now, there's two main strategies when it comes to planning your retail arbitrage. One strategy is to source all the stores in one area. You know, if you see a, a area um, and it's got all these different types of stores, well, you just park in the parking lot and hit all the stores looking for your inventory. And, and that's one strategy. It's really great because you're able to hit more stores in less time. You're able to do less mileage because you just parked your car at one spot, sourced everywhere. And then you're sometimes you try new stores. You're like, I've never sourced at a Michaels before. I've never sourced at a world market before. And you might source and get out of your comfort zone and find more inventory that way. You can also find some bolos, some things that you need to be on the lookout for. And uh, or if you're like, man, I found this one thing at Target. Man, I should probably go find all those items at other Targets near me. And, and you might end up changing your strategy. But there's multiple opportunities with this strategy. Finding all the items in one area, finding all the different types of stores in one area really can help you, you know, find more inventory. Now, if you find something that you like at one of these stores, it's possible that you might want to start go to this second retail arbitrage strategy, which is sourcing multiple locations of one store. Maybe you've got a bunch of Walmarts in your area or a bunch of Targets and you can make up a map and you're like, I'm just going to go to all the Targets in this area. I'm going to make this loop. And I'm going to be able to find a lot of inventory. And, you know, maybe there's a, a certain particular retail store that has a store wide sale. And you're like, I'm going to hit all of these store. Like sometimes big, big lots will have, you know, for their buzz club members. This is another tip. Be sure you sign up for all the uh, store memberships and they'll send you an email saying, hey, on this Saturday, you get early access. You get 25 percent off your entire order and you can have be taking advantage of store-wide sales where you'll hit all the big lots in your area. Um, you can restock some replens. Replens are items that you can, that people buy and then they need to be replenished because they're consumed. And so, um, you know, whether it's grocery items or whether that's health and beauty items, there's a lot of times where you can go restock replens. Or maybe there's items that you buy at a certain store and you sell out and you just go back to that store and you buy, up, buy them up again because, uh, you know that you can find them there. Um, there's seasonal clearance at a lot of these stores. There's, again, buying bolos, have, being looking out for bolos. Bolo, by the way, stands for be on the lookout. Bolo, be on the lookout. Um, and it helps you find a lot of opportunities. So this is what I usually do. If I don't have a plan for my retail arbitrage sourcing, and I've got a certain amount of time, my first plan is this one. I source all the stores in one area. I go to a certain you know area and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to the Target. I'm gonna look around Target. I'm gonna go to TJ Maxx and look at TJ Maxx. I'm gonna go to Barnes and Noble and look at Barnes and Noble. And after that, if I'm like, you know what? I didn't find anything at Target. I didn't find anything at Barnes and Noble. I didn't find anything at Michaels. 
I didn't find anything at World Market, but you know what? I filled up a cart at TJ Maxx. I might transition from all that store, all the stores in one area to going around town thinking, hey, this might be uh, the same type of results in other areas. So I'm going to go to TJ Maxx and all uh, in my in my town and try to hit as many as I can. Now, I know that works really well with um, bigger towns that have bigger options, you know, more options for um for finding uh, inventory, but it this is what I usually do. I usually go to one place until I find something that's hot, and then I'll start to go to that store and plan my whole day around that store. So that's a, another opportunity to be able to get more inventory. Now, um, when you are going through a retail store, this is my usual thought process when I'm walking through a retail store. First I do is I head for the clearance section. If I know where the clearance section is, I go there. You know, sometimes there's clearance aisles, sometimes there's clearance end capped. Sometimes the clearance stuff is just scattered throughout and you have to look for a certain color stickers or uh, something like that. But I look for the clearance section and I always go there first because those are items that you can find really cheap that will have higher ROI. And when I'm doing that, I also, the next place I go is I look at popular full priced items. Um, in fact, the last two times I've been outsourcing with retail arbitrage. I have spent more on full priced, regular priced items than I have clearance priced. And so um, right now I'm, run, I'm on a hot streak right now, finding a lot of stuff that is full priced items and and not finding as much on clearance stuff. And it comes in waves and you have to understand that sometimes there's a big clearance wave and you can stock up on a lot of clearance stuff. And other times there's full price stuff that is really profitable and you can stock up on that. Um, but you wanna look for hard to find items. Some, some of them might be restricted. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but if you have a hard to find item with, that you're approved to sell, look for those, always be looking for those. Look for local products. There are things that are only sold in your area or in your state that are not available uh, across the United States or you know across the world. And so, if you see an item that you know is a local item, I mean, there's certain types of brands of, of uh, hot sauce. I'm in Texas, and so there's certain types of brands of salsa that are only sold here. But you know what? There's people who used to live in Texas that now live all over the United States or all over the world. They want that specific hot sauce. I will sell it to them for a profit. So look for local products, another way to increase your inventory. And then check out the sales and coupons. There might be, might be some times where you can stack some coupons. Um, you know, you have a certain sale and then there's a coupon to make some good money. Um, you know, it's it's a good opportunity to be able to look through uh, the coupons and you can just look right there um, and, and try to decide if that's something worth looking at. And then finally, when I'm going through a retail store, I look up and I look down, meaning a lot of times our eyes are only affixed on the, uh, the middle parts of the aisles. They don't, we don't usually look at the top and we usually don't look at the bottom row, but especially in clearance sections, sometimes I get on my hands and knees if possible. Um, sometimes my back doesn't uh, you know, agree with that, but other times I'll, I'll try to do my best to look down on the bottom because there might be stuff down there that's profitable or there might be stuff on the top shelves that are profitable. Now here's, here's another tip when you're walking through a retail store. If you see a section, I'll just say I'm going through the toy section and I see there's toys that are completely sold out. There's a certain type of toy and it's sold out. There's there's no more there. Well, it's possible that they are not sold out in the store because there's some on the top shelf. The top shelf is usually where stores put their overstock, which means there's not enough room on the shelf. And so when the, they first got the items at the first place, they you know put the stuff on the shelf and there was like two or three more. They didn't have room for it on the shelf, so they put it on the top shelf. Well. If I ever see a place that is completely out of stock on the shelf, I'll look up and I'll see if I can see. Now I'm 6'3", so I have a little bit of an advantage. Um, but if you you might be able to see that there's items that are up there that would fill in that sold out spot. And then if something is sold out, it's probably profitable on Amazon because it's either a hot item, a popular item, and you can check to see if that's something that you want to sell. Um, there's also been times like if I've been in the toy section, I take a, I, I go find one of those lightsabers and it's a toy lightsaber. And I'm like trying to poke up around the top or I can use that on the bottom shelf to kind of, you know, move stuff down uh, closer to the, 
uh, the edge that's not all the way in the back. And so just a couple tips for you to be able to find more inventory. Now, when you're outsourcing, you want to make sure you're using the right sourcing tools. If you're just using the Amazon seller app, um, you are getting incomplete information. Uh, I totally recommend, obviously, you got your smartphone. You want to be using the Scoutify seller app. And here is why. The Scoutify app is like so much better than the Amazon seller app for a million reasons. Um, here is a screenshot. Say I'm out sourcing and I come across this Hot Wheels um, crisscross crash set. I'm like, okay, I can make some good money with that. Um, it says it's ranked 4,000 out of 6 million in toys. If you click on this part of the uh, screen on your smartphone, it will tell you that that is calculates the top 1% of the toy category. And so you can click it again and go back to the 4,414 4, and you can, you know, see right then and there, this is in the top 1%. And you heard me earlier talking about the sales rank chart. And I, I, you know, I give this to you so that you can figure out what's in the top, what uh, percentages of each category. But right there, Scoutify just tells you right there, it's a top 1%. And the top 1% is usually selling the fastest. But there's so many other op opportunities for you to be able to, to learn stuff. There's, um, it tells you the, the net profit that you'll get if, uh, if you're able to sell it for the buy box price. Um, but you can also, Click right here on restrictions, and it will tell you what your allowed conditions are, what your restricted conditions are. So I can see I can sell this in new or collectible condition, but I'm restricted from selling it in used condition. You click done to go back. Uh, so right there, it tells you you've got your restrictions. Uh, I'm really curious and want to do some research on Keepa, so I click the research button, and I can choose Keepa from one of the options, and it tell and it lets me in and. Uh, gives me this keeper graph so I can see what at one point in time what the used price was, the new price, the sales rank, and you can choose just like you can on a, a desktop all these different options. You go back and click done, uh, and you're like, hey, I want to add this to my uh, buy buy list. Uh, you know, you click on the add button, you type in what your cost was, how many you got, uh, and how much you want to list it for, what the date you bought it, what supplier, what store you got it, what condition, all these different options. And then when you add it to the buy list, it um, it goes right here into your cart here. And when you are done sourcing for the day, you can email yourself that list, upload it to Inventory Lab, and all of your information from how many you bought to where you bought it from to how much you bought it for, your cost of goods, um, and your sales, all, all that stuff is automatically inputted into Inventory Lab so that all you have to do after that is create your shipment. It saves so much time. I absolutely love it. I can't imagine doing Amazon FBA without it. And Scoutify comes bundled with Inventory Lab. Fulltimefba.com forward slash Inventory Lab to be able to do that. It is a monthly fee, but it is a monthly fee I joyfully pay every single month. And so Inventory Lab combined with Scoutify when you're sourcing, um, it, it makes you find more better inventory. Uh, you're finding more stuff because you have more information to be able to do. And you're you're not buying stuff that's not that's going to end up tanking in price because you're able to, to look at Keepa and you're able to see the price history and the sales rank history. It's something to look into. So again, fulltimefba.com forward slash inventory lab. Some other sourcing tools that I use, backup battery. My phone will die if I'm sourcing all day. I need to make sure that I am recharging it so I have a backup battery. Also, I use discounted gift cards. So a lot of times I purchase my inventory with discounted gift cards. If you want more information about it, go to fulltimefba.com forward slash raise. And raise is a website that you can purchase discounted gift cards. So I can buy a $100 Walmart gift card for like $92. That's $8 in free inventory money. I can buy a TJ Maxx gift card for, uh, I can get a $50 TJ Maxx gift card for $38. That's $12 in free sourcing money. So again, I'm able to have, be able to buy more inventory because I have more money to spend. So again, we're increasing our inventory. So take a screenshot of this if you want to see, uh, to remember this, fulltimefba.com forward slash raise to be able to um, buy discounted gift cards. 
And when you do buy those discounted gift cards, just make sure there's some for in-store purchases and some for online purchase purchases. You want to make sure you buy the in-store. Unless you're doing online arbitrage, then do the um, online uh, version of the gift card. And then again, fulltimefba.com forward slash inventory lab for Scottify. I cannot do my sourcing without these. All right, let me give you some information of how to do how to recognize clearance stickers in certain stores. So here's a Target clearance sticker. Um, what the little thing right here in the top corner is something to really look for. This is the percentage off. So you can see the more stickers an item has, the higher the percentage has gotten. And you know you you see the price right now. But yeah, this is 70% off, and so you know that that's a bigger discount. That's a, a lot of fun to to know and understand and, to, and take advantage of. How about Walmart? This is one of what Walmart's stickers look like. One tip when it comes to Walmart clearance stickers, right there in the middle, there's the date uh, the sticker was printed. If I ever see a date over six months, you know, or you know, uh, from before now, it's possible that that price is even cheaper. So I'll take that item. I'll go over to the price checker scanner and I'll double check. And there's a lot of times where this says it was 54.88. It's on clearance for 40. I take it over to but in, and I find out, you know, that's not profitable. It's not profitable at $40. But I take it over to the price checker because the sticker is so old and it says $15 on the price checker. I would have put it back at $40, but at $15, it's profitable. Again, you're finding more inventory because of the information I'm telling you right now. So take advantage of that. What about Walgreens? We got Walgreens here. They're, that They also put the, the place that their, um, you know, their sticker is uh, was printed and how long it's good for. So you can see, uh, be able to take advantage of that. TJ Maxx has red sticker. I think they've got yellow stickers first and then red stickers. Uh, yellow stickers are, are a smaller percentage off. Red stickers are a higher percentage off. So you can look for those colors. Let's see what else we got. We got big lots here. Uh, so big lots, their usual stickers are, are like this, but then they put this little sticker over, over their barcode that gives the clearance price. And so again, you can recognize this because a lot of times you might be in a toy section at Big Lots and sometimes Big Lots does not always separate their clearance stuff from their regular price stuff. But if you see a sticker like this, you will recognize that it's clearance. You'll be able to find more inventory to sell on Amazon. So right there, those are the clearance price same thing with Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning has color-coded stickers um, that, you know, 20, 40, 60, 80% off, and you can see what kind of uh, sell you're getting. So one of the problems I hear over and over again is that I'm going to source items and I'm not finding stuff. So here is how I've been able to overcome this. Here's how I've been able to fill up carts worth of stuff. Not every time, but often. This is why you're not finding stuff. You're using old school strategies. Um, a lot of times clearance sales, it's low hanging fruit. It's easy. That's why we fall in love with selling on Amazon in the first place. We found awesome deals with clearance, but it's low hanging fruit. It's stuff that is, you know, it's on clearance because they're getting rid of it and they're not gonna restock it again. It's clearance price because they weren't able to sell it at full price in their store. And so it's it's there's not much opportunity for volume when it comes to clearance sales. They're also just a limited time. You know, once it's gone, it's gone. And not only that, they don't offer very many replans for you to continue to restock over and over again. And you're basically shopping the leftovers. And while they're, they're very profitable, and if you get enough leftovers, it's really good, but you really are sourcing in the wrong place. I always look at clearance first, but uh, but you, like I said, like that, like I said to you before, lately I've been running a hot streak with regular priced items. Regular priced finds take more time and are not as sexy, and the ROI is not as great. But would you rather make a hundred percent ROI for something that you know you only found one or two of, or would you rather make fifty percent ROI on items that you buy ten at a time and you're able to go in every other week and purchase more? Let's, you know, try not to find the sexy, exciting stuff and find the profitable stuff. So regular priced finds. This is how I do it. I choose a store that has multiple stores around your town. So if you have a, an area where there's a lot of Walmarts or a lot of Walgreens or a lot of Targets. I look for those type of stores. 
if you live in a small town, think about the large town next to you and and a store that has multiples of that you can go to um, when you're sourcing. Then pick an aisle and scan everything. Now you might be like, oh, I hate scanning everything. Yes, it's like, you know, you got to kiss a lot of frogs before you can find the prints. You have to scan a lot of items. It is boring. I don't know. Bring an audio book and some headphones. Learn something while you're, you know, doing this. Or, or just, you know, have some good music going on. Because most of the time, the music in the stores is not very good, is it? So pick an aisle and scan everything. Whatever aisle you are passionate about. If you recently had a baby and you know a lot of baby stuff, go and source the baby section. If you know a lot about the kitchen area and, and cooking and stuff, go check out that area. But pick an aisle and scan everything, and you will be shocked at how many items that you're going to be able to find that you can sell on Amazon because you've scanned everything. So scan things that are in your comfort zone. Like I just said, if you, you know, recently had a baby and you know a lot about the baby stuff or maybe, you know, you, you've, um, you know, like the, the kitchen stuff and you look at that, or maybe you're into tools and you search the, the hardware section of a store, pick items in your comfort zone. Another opportunity, scan items outside your comfort zone. Maybe you're, you know, a lot of times we don't, we leave a store thinking I couldn't find anything, but obviously we didn't scan everything or look everywhere. Pick something outside of your comfort zone. You'll be able to find more inventory. And once you find some good leads, go find them in other stores in your area. So I'm thinking like, you know, if I'm looking at a kitchen appliance section and I'm going through and I'm looking through the appliances, I'm looking through the accessories and I find two or three things that are profitable. Well, what I do then is I like say I went to a, a Target and I found some items that were profitable in the kitchen accessories department. I go to another Target and I go find those items at that Target. I go to another Target, I find those items at that Target and you know continue to do that i'm able to find more inventory and like i said before lower your roi parameters a lot of times we're taught try to get 100 percent roi try to double your money because you know if you need to lower your price you'll be able to you know lower it and still make money but a lot of times we leave a lot of stuff behind because we're scared about 50 percent roi or we're scared about 30 percent roi guess what it's still profit it's still something that's profitable. So no matter if you're making a $10 profit or a $5 profit, it's still that money in your pocket and stuff that you can snowball into better selling inventory. So let's keep going. It, a lot of times people say I keep, you know, running into these restrictions. But most of the people I talk to who say they come across restrictions as a new Amazon FBA seller, well, I said, okay, so did you apply? And they're like, no, I was just restricted, so I moved on. And I'm like, this is something you got to get through your skull. Restrictions are a speed bump, not a dead end. Respect restrictions will slow you down a little bit, but they are not the end of the road. So really, there's restricted categories. If you go to fulltimefba.com forward slash what can I sell, you can see all the categories. Go and try to apply for as many categories as you can. Some of them might request something that you're not able to give them, but others will automatically approve you based on your current seller metrics. So you will be able to open up doors and find more inventory because you're able to apply for those restricted categories. There are some brands that are restricted, some ASINs that are restricted. Again, this is how you ap get apply to get approved to sell these restricted brands and ASINs. You log into Seller Central, you hover over inventory, click add a product. And, and then while you're there, you search the name of the brand or the ASIN in the list a new product section. Um, and then you'll see that there's listing limitations and it says request approval. So, you know, if I wanted to get approved to sell these Hatchimals, you know, I just typed in Hatchimals. And there was a long list of items that came up. I just picked one and I clicked request approval. Now, when you do that, one of two things will happen. It'll either say, congratulations, based on your seller metrics, you are approved. That's awesome. Or it will say, you know, we need to have certain brand invoices or a letter from the brand. And then you can either choose to do that or you can set an alarm on your smartphone for six months from now or three months from now to remind you to try to do it again. Because a lot of times, the longer you have good selling metrics, the more likely you'll get approved to sell those items on Amazon. And so maybe three months from now, you'll get approved to sell that brand. 
And then if that doesn't work, try again in three more months. I've had an opportunity where it took me 12 months of solid metrics to be able to get approved to sell a particular brand. And I don't know if they just lowered their requirements or if I finally met some type of threshold. But again, restrictions are not dead ends. They're just speed bumps. They'll slow you down, but they are not the end of the road. So um, always do that. And I'll, I'll even while I'm in store, I scan something and with the Scottify app, it tells me I'm restricted. I'll, I got Seller Central on a quick little bookmark. I go inventory, add a product, type in the brand, enter it, try to see if I'll get approved. And, you know, it, it opens up the doors to finding more inventory. So I want you to source with confidence. This is one of the ways that I source with confidence. Number one, always be sourcing. Obviously, the more time you spend sourcing, the more inventory you're going to find. Another way to double your inventory. Be consistent. Always um, look out for opportunities to source. You know, uh, and, and you know, you're always sourcing. Always be consistent. A lot of times, I was like, well, I can't find any inventory. I haven't found anything all month. And I asked him, how many times did you go sourcing for inventory? Like, well, I went for one day for about an hour and... Another day for about half an hour, and then I just I, I just was really discouraged, so I stopped. I'm like, well, you're not going to find stuff if you just completely give up. And you don't always have to have a winning sourcing day to be able to find source. There's times it's, it's like feast or famine sometimes. You know, I could go to a bunch of stores, fill up my entire minivan with inventory and, and one day, and then the next day I can go out and find just two items. Now, if I made my business decisions based on that, then I'd probably just give up because I wouldn't find anything. And so you need to be a, have the CEO mindset. The CEO does not look at how one day went or how a one week went. They look at a lot over a long period of time. So be consistent. When you get to a store, always grab a cart. I mean, that's just psychological uh, that, that helps you along the way and to fill it up. Be persistent. Um, there's one time I went to Big Lots. I couldn't find anything. I ended up writing Big Lots off for two years. I didn't source Big Lots at all for two years because of one failed shopping sourcing trip. And I could have, I, I probably lost thousands of dollars because of me writing off Big Lots. I'm like, oh, I never find anything there. But no, be persistent. Don't give up. Continue on. And now Big Lots has, has helped me make a lot of money on Amazon. So, Another thing, develop good relationships with employees and managers. You know, always be kind. Always leave the place better than you left it. Always be good to the people who work there. A lot of times I'll just, you know, if I see a worker, I'll be like, is this all the clearance you have or is there more clearance in the back? And I, I usually ask that question if I see an employee. And some of them will say, oh, we got two truckloads in the back or we have two uh, storage units in the back uh, of clearance stuff. And one time one of the workers actually it was at a rural rural it's hard to say rural at a rural walmart uh said yeah we have two storage containers of of toys that you know, we just don't have space for them on the floor and i said do you mind if i take a look at that i'm like well you know we're not supposed to but you know we need to get rid of that stuff so how about you come in tomorrow and i'll, I'll be out there with you and and can help you out so I went out there and I, and I saw these toys and the toys were toys that were popular from two years ago and I got dust on them and I had a horrible day allergy wise that day, but I had an incredible day profit wise and sourcing wise because I was finding inventory that's been out there for over two years that I was at, that was at, you know, really great clearance prices because I asked because I developed a good relationship with an employee and a manager that helped uh, increase my inventory greatly again. Like I said before, be thorough. Look up, look down, look all around. Be able to look everywhere for inventory. Be open-minded. A lot of times you're like, there's no way that's going to be profitable. There was one time, and I've told this story a bunch of times, I went through a clearance section and I found a toy. All it was was a piece of plastic with a sticker on it. And I was like, that's not profitable. I say, I, And it was on clearance for $3. And I'm like, that there's no way that's profitable. There's like five or six of them, so I just... I didn't make an assumption. I scanned it. They're selling on Amazon for in the toy section, really great rank for $50 to $60. And I was like, oh my gosh. 
So, and I sent them in, they sold. I started going to all of that particular retail store's locations, finding this piece of plastic with a sticker on it and was able to make thousands of dollars because I did not make an assumption. So be open-minded, don't make assumptions. Does that happen every day? No, that's just one home run story. There's a ton of stuff that I've scanned that proved my assumption correctly that this was not profitable. But there are those random times where you're like, whoa, like one time I was in a clearance section, something was regular priced 80 on clearance for 75. And I'm like, oh, I hate those type of clearance prices. That's not like a real clearance sale. It's only like five or six dollars off. So it's like, no, $80 on clearance for seven or $75. I would have just like kept going. But then I need to remember, don't make any assumptions. So I scanned it. It was selling on Amazon for 200 bucks. I'm like. I will buy this for $75 and sell it for $200. Yes, so don't make assumptions. And finally, take note of the sold out items. If you go to a certain store, that item is sold out. Again, you look up on the top shelf. And if that item is not up there too, if you go to another store, retail store, look for that same item in that store. Um, you know, It might be sold out because it's hot and hard to find and you can have a bolo to be looking for. So that's ways that you can source with confidence. Now, when it comes to retail arbitrage, it's good to have the right kind of expectations. Don't be discouraged if you don't find anything. I know it, it's a buzzkill, but if you don't find anything, we've all been there. In fact, I'd rather you not find anything than buy stuff that's not going to be profitable. It's buy stuff that you're going to end up paying long-term storage fees that you end up losing money on. Don't be discouraged if you don't find anything. Some stores will be awesome. Some stores won't be. Again, it comes in waves. Uh, some days will be awesome. Some days will really drain the life out of you. But that's guess what? This is a business. We are committed to success. You are committed to success, right? So keep on with it. And the more you scan, the more the better your sourcing skills will be. It's definitely like a skill. You'll be able to make decisions faster. You'll be able to understand things faster. And the more inventory you are going to find. So double your inventory. This was a ton of stuff. I've just shot you with a fire hydrant worth of information of ways that you can double your inventory. And But here's the thing. Is the size of your inventory important? Yeah, the size of your inventory is important. You need to have items to sell. And the more items you have to sell, potentially, the more profits that you can get. But the answer is also no. The size of your inventory is not important. And what is really important? The most important thing is the quality of your inventory. The items that you have that are the best ranked items, the best with the best ROI, that is really what's most important. And having something with a great average sales rank, you know, I use Keepa to look at the average sales rank. You have good ROI. My minimum ROI when I'm sourcing is 30%. And if I find something with 30%, I buy it. And that 30% gives me a little wiggle room to be able to, you know, lower my price if I need to. But I am not emotionally connected to my inventory. And this was something I had to work really hard on. Um, and, and, and a lot of times I feel like if I have to lower my price or if I have to end up losing money on some of my inventory, that I feel like a failure. But that's not true. We are not failures because of an event. You're only a failure if you give up. And uh, it's really important to understand and not get emotionally attached to our inventory and realize that sometimes the best thing to do is to lower our price, to get that capital back, to put it into something that has a better sales rank and a better ROI. And so I always make my decisions, a great sales rank in the top one to 3% of the category and a good ROI. And here's the thing, it was a three, three or four years ago, I had 3,200 items in my inventory that's how many items that i had at one point 3200 items in my inventory and i was able to make six figures in sales on amazon with 3200 items in my inventory but the next year i made better sourcing decisions and didn't buy things that were going to end up taking monthly storage fees and long-term storage fees eating down my roi I was actually able to increase, so I made six figures in sales. I was actually able to increase my sales by 50% with only 1,600 items in my inventory. 
The next year, I increased my sales again by 50% with only 800 items in my inventory. I've been able to continually over time improve. And so I've actually been cutting my inventory in half every year of what my average inventory is uh, during the month. And I've been able to increase my profits and increase my you know, sales. And so I knew what a title like how to cut your inventory in half in less than 30 days is not you know, very eye appealing, but all the things that I've taught you during this webinar will help you find more inventory to sell and it will help you find better inventory to sell. But again, the focus does not need to be the size of your inventory. It needs to be the quality of your inventory. And in just a moment, we're going to go over Q&A. But before we do that, I want to tell you how I can teach you how to have high quality inventory to be able to make uh, really good money on Amazon. And it would not be dependent on the number of items in your inventory. And that's the Jumpstart Amazon course. This is a course that I created, not only how to start an Amazon business, but how to build uh, up a solid Amazon business with great high selling inventory with retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and wholesale. I go and I break down all of those strategies, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and wholesale, and how that can help you have a well-rounded and a well-balanced inventory uh, to be able to you know, start finding success on Amazon and consistent success. The course is a combination ebook and video course. 220 page ebook if you like to read and look at pictures, highlight stuff, underline it. Um, if your choice is to, you know, print out the PDF and and uh, I've, I've even had people take it to an office supply store and they, you know, printed it out and bound it. But it's a 20, 220 page book or it's a video course that's over 10 and a half hours. Now, the content in both the book and the video is exactly the same. So what you get in the ebook and the video is the same. It just depends on how what method you want to do. And maybe you want to do both. If you want to read it and watch the videos. <clears throat> now the videos do have, you know, screen walkthroughs of like understanding Seller Central and how to navigate Seller Central and how to figure out your profit margins and how to understand Inventory Lab and how, I mean, so it has a lot of screens, uh, walkthroughs, but, it, but the book has plenty of screenshots that help you, but they both are there to help you. And I've given you multiple proven strategies for success. Um, not only how to set up your business with like, you know, an LLC or an S Corp or sole proprietorship, um, you know, getting set up with, with taxes, getting set up with all the things that you are required to do from Amazon, but going into the details of how to make sure you have strong seller metrics so that you can get your chances of approval of restricted brands increased, being able to understand that there's certain strategies when it comes to pricing that will help you make more money and how to sell your items faster than your competition. I've got a fun, a lot of fun bonuses, but here's the thing. If you use the coupon code, save 50, S-A-V-E-5-0, you can save $50 today on the Jumpstart Amazon course. Fulltimefba.com forward slash jumpstart is where you can find uh, more information. You can get the first two videos for free. Uh, just watching the, the first two module video modules for free, just uh, go into that link but it's an opportunity for you to find success. If you're like, I already have my Amazon business built, that's great, you can skip the first couple modules, but then you wanna know all the trick tips and tricks on how to take your Amazon business to the next level and be able to uh, really find success with Amazon. This is a great course to get you going. It's all about building a successful Amazon FBA business. And I got so much to teach you and so much to tell you, and I can't wait to get started with you. Fulltimefba.com forward slash jumpstart. Right now, I'm going to go, I'm going to look over here because this is where my questions are on this screen over here. And we're going to go through some questions, do my best in the time that we have to be able to answer as many of these as I can. Uh, David says, thanks for all you do. Well, thank you, David, for saying that. It would be, uh, it's an honor to be able to come here and, and teach these things for you all. Let's see, Brittany says, would it be beneficial for me to do retail arbitrage in a small area? We have one Walmart, two dollar stores, one thrift store, but the good news is I have a full-time job in another town that's bigger. I'll be putting tons of miles on my car. Okay, so Brittany, I totally understand what you're talking about because the town I lived in before the town I live in now was the same thing. We 
we did we did not even have a Walmart. We had one of those knockoff stores that tries to act like a Walmart. Um, and and so it was, you know, the closest Walmart was about 30, 35 minutes away. But it is possible when you're able to take advantage of those opportunities, you'll be able to, I would say, focus more on the uh, retail priced items, like the regular priced items, because those are the items that they're going to continue to restock and, and start searching for those. But yeah, if you have another uh, job in a bigger town, trying to plan, you know, opportunities around that, being able to source inventory, it's totally possible to build up good inventory. But also, so besides retail arbitrage, there's also online arbitrage where you have access to the world and being able to find stuff. And I, I go through that in the course too, of how to get started with online arbitrage and make good choices with that. So hopefully that's, that's helpful for you. Tom says, is there any service that will give you products on a daily basis? Uh, I did join Q4 and it was profitable. Do you know of any similar service? Don't have much time to source. I need some help. So Tom, uh, there are some services out there that provide you with products to purchase. The only thing about that is that they're they're good for the short term, but for long term success and building up, you know, it's really good for you to be able to try to get out there yourself and, and learn these things. Right now, with retail arbitrage, I'm part of a group called Bolo Mart. If you go to fulltimefba.com forward slash Bolo Mart, B O L O M A R T. That's a Facebook group that provides different types of bolos and leads. And the thing I like about it is, you know, there is a monthly fee, but most months I'm able to make up for that fee for the things that I get from, from that um, service. And so I'm able to, you know, I'm, I, again, I go to a store, I got my phone, I go to the Bolo Mart Facebook group, and I type in the store's name in the, in the search engine. So I type in, you know, Walmart or I type in Target, and I see all the recent posts of people posting bolos for that particular store. So again, fulltimefba.com forward slash bolo mart uh, takes you to their website to be able to find that. And uh, and it's it's helped me out a lot, but especially during Q4. I know sometimes during Q4, uh, there's like a, a proven Q4 sourcing. I've used that a lot with Q4 also. And if you wanna get on a waiting list, cause it's not Q4 now, but if you wanna get on the waiting list, fulltimefba.com forward slash proven Q4. Uh, and I'll send you an email the moment the door is open for that to be able to get some help uh, with that. Um, Fulltimefba.com forward slash proven Q4 to get part of that wait list. Um, but I think that those are good as like a starter, but eventually you wanna be able to get out on your own and finding those items on your own. And those might give you some ideas. You're like, I never would have thought to source that. Like one of the Bolo Mart things was a, um, was this little kid's pajama set. And I was like, I never would have thought to source kids pajamas. You know, I, I was approved to selling clothing. And again, if you're like, oh, I can't sell clothing, the door's closed, maybe you can. You can go and, and try to apply. And, and sometimes the clothing and shoes uh, department is open to everybody to sell. And so they, they open and close from time to time. So take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, let's see, Crystal says, I'm a brand new seller. I don't have much money to spend. Would you recommend Scatify to someone who's just starting? Um, I would. I would recommend Inventory Lab and Scatify. They come together in one price to someone who is just starting. I know you say you don't have a lot of money, if, but it's totally worth it to start it from the beginning. And my focus for you, my suggestion for you, if your money is really tight, number one, look around your house for items you don't use that would be profitable. You know, look at used books, used board games, um, items that you got as a gift and never opened. There might be items in the, your kitchen, uh, appliance that you thought you were going to buy and use and you never used it. A lot of free stuff for you to be able to sell. Uh, there's a website called FreeCycle, F-R-E-E-C-Y-C-L-E. -E -E. It's like Recycle, except it's FreeCycle. You can get free items to sell on a website like that. Um you know, that people looking for things or looking to give away things. I saw a listing once that said, you know, 20 free board games, a couple of them are new. And I jumped on it and I got those things for free. I drove to that person's um, house. They left it on their front porch. I picked it up and left and, you know, it, it worked out for me. And I know that it's not for everybody. But then garage sales and thrift stores are really good for you to look at. Used bookstores are really good to be able to find items that you can sell. 
that you can buy really cheap. But then after that, you want to start ramping up your inventory by being able to purchase higher price stuff. But that's like uh, my suggestion for you for just starting out. Julia says, do you actually tell the employees or the manager what you're doing? Yeah, I used to feel really nervous about that. I used to feel really like creepy that, oh yeah, I'm buying your stuff and selling it on Amazon. Um, but most of them are extremely happy to help because their job is to sell stuff. With the clearance price stuff, their job is to get it out because they need that shelf space back for the newer stuff. And they want me to be able to buy stuff. They want to increase their sales so they can impress their superiors, their bosses. And so it's um, it's really good to be able to, <coughs> excuse me, they I mean, they just want to sell stuff. So yeah, when I tell them that, usually a little light bulb goes off and and they're like, okay, I've, I've got more stuff in the back or I there's more of this stuff that's in a different section of the store. Be sure you go look over there. I mean, there was one time I was stocking up on this one toy and they're like, we had to put some of this toy on an end cap over by the baby section. So you might want to go check that out. I found more stuff. I've even had store managers and store employees, um, area managers, give me their cell phone or ask for mine. And it's always a good idea to have a card ready to give them. It makes it look even more professional. But we, we exchange information and I get text information or a phone call with a voicemail of someone saying, hey, Steven, we're marking down our toys today. And so by tomorrow, all the toys that we have marked down should be marked down. And I'm like, first dibs, I got first dibs because they told me about it. So they, most of them are not like creeped out about that. Now there are a few exceptions. Target is not a reseller friendly place. Kohl's is not a reseller friendly place. I do not suggest buying things from those stores with your resale certificate. Don't buy anything from a, as a using your resale certificate to buy tax free. I definitely suggest paying tax for those items while you're there at Kohl's or Target because you you might just be a regular customer, but you know, but most of them, if they find out you're a reseller, they will not work with you or want to sell to you. Um, and that's a shame because, you know, I know they're trying to protect their regular clientele and regular customers, but a lot of, but other stores are more than happy to go out of their way to find items to sell up, sell us. And, you know, they, they don't mind if certain items are sold out. Um, so that's a really good question. Julia says, do you buy an item if Amazon is selling it? Yes and no. Um, if if it's okay, so one of the features of Scoutify is that there's a Keepa, um, there's the Keepa link in there where you can look at the Keepa pro uh, Keepa program and look at the Keepa graph for an item, and it will tell you if Amazon is in stock currently or if Amazon has been in stock recently. So if Amazon is consistently in stock, unless I can beat their price by 10 or 15 dollars i will not compete against amazon so if amazon is selling a, a kitchen appliance for 50 dollars and i can sell it for 35 or 40 dollars then i will compete against amazon because my price is going to be much lower but if 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 i see that amazon is in and out of stock a lot i can look at the keeper graph and see what the third party new prices do when amazon is out of stock and if those prices go up then I'll just wait till Amazon runs out of stock and then I'll go out and re, uh, re, uh, reorder and, and restock and be able to get those items. If you keep hearing me talk about Keepa, if you want to learn more about Keepa, there is a, a section in, Keepa, in, in the Jumpstart Amazon course walking you through how to understand a Keepa chart and how to read a Keepa chart. And, um, and, and it, I mean, it's a game changer when making really good decisions. So most of the time I stay away from Amazon as a competitor, but there are times that I will compete against Amazon. Again, when they go in on a stock a lot, or if they're priced too high and I can price below them, I will compete against them. So that's a good question. Have you been able to cut your inventory in half due to taking on a few wholesale accounts? Or are you based on making better buying decisions or a little bit of both? That's a really good question. And I think it's because I'm making better buying decisions. You know, yes, I do have wholesale items that I am selling, but I think my wholesale items are also like the, the items that I'm selling wholesale are based on making better buying decisions. You know, I'm not making bad wholesale decisions. I, mean, I did it first when I first started with wholesale, 
Um, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I made some really bad decisions, but mostly it's just about making a better buying decision. And again, in this course, I walk you through how to make the best buying decision. So you're not buying items that take in price. You're not buying items that you end up having 15 items that you need to return because you have long-term storage fees coming up and none of them sold. So I go through that in this course. Again, fulltimefba.com forward slash jumpstart. You can save $50 by taking advantage of that coupon code SAVE50. Ruth Ann was just saying thank you for this good refresher. It's motivated motivated me to look at RA again. Really thankful for that. Kimberly says, were your inventory numbers you quoted total number of items or number of individual SKUs? Also, was the 3,200, 1,600, 800 items per month or per year? So that's a good question. So the number that I told you where the the number of individual SKU, the, the, the number of individual items that I was selling. At one point I had 3,200 items that I was selling. Some of them were multiples of, of, of certain items. A lot of them were one-offs. And when I'm, when I was looking at those numbers, I was averaging about 3,200 a month. Uh, you know, it went up and down because I bought stuff and sold stuff, but I would look at, you know, over the course of the month, it would be about 3,200. And I guess the, the course of the year too, it'd be about 3,200. But then the next year it went down to 1,600 was my average. And, and then it went down to 800 was my average. So, you know, I would look every day and I would see what our inventory levels were and they just kept going down while our profits kept going up. And uh, a lot of that was because I was finding better inventory with retail arbitrage, finding more inventory and making better decisions. Jerry says, what version of Scatify are you using? Seems different from mine. Uh, recently, Scatify just released Scatify a new version of Scatify, and they're phasing out the old one. So if you're still using an older version of Scatify, that's not going to be available much longer. Um, in fact, if you're watching this on the replay, it might already be gone, and there might only be one Scatify. Uh, so if you're looking for the new one, you can just search for it in the App Store, Scatify. Uh, you should be able to find it that way. Connor says, how do you go about tracking, tracking profits and keeping records for all your sales? I'm able to do that through Inventory Lab. Again, that's one of the reasons why I suggest starting your Amazon business early on with Inventory Lab because while I'm outsourcing, I'm able to punch in my buy cost, my store, the store that I bought it from, the price I want to sell it at. And as I'm making my sales, Inventory Lab is communicating with Amazon and it crunches all my numbers for me. So at the end of the month, I can go and say, you know, I can base my business decisions based on real numbers. I can say, wow, you know what? I thought I did really well at Target this month, but actually Walmart kicked Target's butt. And so I'm like, I actually made 70% of my sales because of Target arbitrage. I mean, Walmart arbitrage and Target wasn't that much. And, um, and there's multiple ways that you can do that. You, you know, it could also break down the different categories. You know, I was like, you know what? I knew toys was awesome during Q4, but I had no idea that shoes was the second highest, uh, you know, category that I sold during Q4. Um, I thought it would have been like home and kitchen or something that would also be a gift worthy type of item, but no, it was shoes. And I could see that and, and keep track of all my profits with Inventory Lab. Inventory Lab also gives the opportunity to put in your mileage, to put in your, you know, if you're buying supplies or if you're buying, you know, certain tools like a desktop scanner, um, things like that. You can uh, track all of that with Inventory Lab. And at the end of the year, you can run your reports so you have all your numbers the right way. So if you want a free month of Inventory Lab, you can go to fulltimefba.com forward slash Inventory Lab, and that will hook you up with a free month. And you also get Scatify. Then after that, that's a monthly fee, which I can't imagine doing my Amazon business without Inventory Lab or Scatify. Let's see what else kind of questions we have. How important is it to pick a good Amazon business name? How do I choose one? Um, as long as your business name is not crappy stuff or something non-professional, any business name will do. And, uh, you know, just what is something meaningful for you and call it that incorporated or, you know, um, just, just pick something. A lot of people stress over stuff like that, but it's really, really not important in the long run. Jonathan says, any tips for categories for new people to look for? I think the two best categories for new people are toys, the toys and games category, and the books category. And I say that because those are the two most profitable categories 
for beginners to start off that are the easiest because books are all approved. There are some brands of toys that are not, are not approved, but most of the, the brands that are out there are able to be sold by anyone. And you can start to learn how the differences in categories work because toys and games category works differently than the books category. And you can find a lot of those that you can sell um, on Amazon for a really good profit. So those are my, my tips on that. So again, if you want more information about the Jumpstart Amazon course, I'll get into some of these questions. Uh, some of you are asking questions about the Jumpstart Amazon course, um, but those answers can be, or those questions can be answered very quickly by going to fulltimefba.com forward slash jumpstart, and you'll be able to, to check out, out that. Um, at the time of recording, the cost of the course, the, the, the list price is $397, but it's on sale for $349. And if you use the coupon code, it takes it down to $297. So $297 for the cost of the course that will help set you up to, I mean, if you take what I teach you in this course, you'll be able to re recoup that investment in, you know, in, in like a month's time or in two months time, you'll be able to more than pay for the course. And then the rest of it is all gravy on top of that. So uh, there's more information about the course at that link. Ira says, do you also use online arbitrage? Personally, I don't. With my, with my Amazon FBA business, I focus on retail arbitrage and wholesale, but my wife does online arbitrage. She does a lot of online arbitrage and um, focusing a lot on shoes and uh, you know, we even have a whole course about that. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, fulltimefba.com forward slash selling shoes is all about our course about selling sh uh, buying shoes uh, at retail and online stores to be able to make a profit with those. Have you had any trouble with inauthentic claims and Amazon not accepting receipts from stores like TJ Maxx or Big Lots? <clears throat> um, I've had a few experiences with inauthentic claims. I've not had any trouble. Um, usually <clears throat> when a company sends an inauthentic claim, um, the very first thing I do is I close down that listing. I return that inventory uh, to my, my house. So immediately it's no longer being sold on Amazon. Then I reply to whoever is claiming the inauthentic claim. And I say, I did not know this was uh, inauthentic. Uh, this is an item I bought at a retail store to sell on Amazon, but I want to respect your business and your brand. I also say, I'd like to be able to open up a wholesale account with you to be able to sell your items under your rules and under your agreements. Um, so I say that, and then I say, I've also spoken with Amazon and, and checked with them about selling your items because I thought I could sell this item because I was not restricted for this item. So please reply to me and let me know, um, you know, if I can become a brand seller for this, but if not, let me know and I understand. So I'm, do, I'm doing multiple things with this at the same time. I am checking to see if they're actually legitimately a, uh, a brand owner who is claiming that I'm selling an inauthentic product. If they reply and they're like, I would like, for, yeah, sure. If you want to sell our items via wholesale, here's our application process. Um, if I don't hear anything back from them at all, I'm kind of curious. Um, uh, I've also opened up a seller. I also would open up a seller central uh, ticket and say, hey, I've just received an inauthentic claim from this uh, certain brand. I thought that I could sell this because I was not restricted to sell this on Amazon. And I purchased an item from, yeah, TJ Maxx. I know that they, they are, are not uh, the UPCs on the, the, um, the actual receipt, but, uh, but there's still a receipt that's available. And I say, you know, if I am not supposed to be selling these items, please let me know. Uh, and if I am, please let me know what I need to say to this brand owner. So you're putting that on the seller central. And so you have, and I always do this via email because that keeps me, that gives me a paper trail where that if someday in the future, my account gets shut down because of an inauthentic claim, I can say, hey, I talked to Amazon and you told me I was not restricted from selling this. And here's proof. And you told me that I could sell this item and that the brand did not have the right to, to claim this. Um, and you, you're trying to cover your bases that way. So you're doing all these type of things for multiple opportunities. I actually thought about putting together a blog post about this um, and my my response and the different angles that I take when it comes to protecting my Amazon account. The reason why I immediately closed down the listing and return the item to my house um, is because a lot of times it's you get three warnings from a brand before they actually submit a counterfeit claim. 
uh, to directly to Amazon. And so I do it immediately after the first time I shut down that listing and return the items. If it turns out that it's just a competitor who's trying to scare me away, then you know, after I get everything sorted out, I'll send it back to Amazon. It only costs me like, you know, 50 or 60 cents to have the stuff returned to me, another 50 or 60 cents to have it sent back to Amazon. So I'm out of, out of dollar, but I'm protecting my account in the long run. So again, sometime in the future at fulltimefba.com, I'll put together a blog post and, uh, and, and we'll walk you through the steps that I take to protect my Amazon account, to double check with Amazon, because it is not right for brands to claim that we're selling something that's counterfeit when we're not. And it's not right for us to be punished for something that we didn't do. And I know Amazon lately has been a shoot first, ask questions later uh, mentality, but they're starting to work out of that and they're trying to get the big picture uh, and understand the full situation before those type of things happen. So uh, but those are those are my thoughts when it comes to dealing with inauthentic claims. Kelly says, I sell used books on Amazon and I'm in thrift stores to source books. I also find items in thrift stores to source too. Yes, absolutely. Thrift store is a great place to find books and new items. Rhonda Parker says, 50% ROI, does that include every fee? Yes, and that's another great thing about Scoutify. Scoutify will do the math for you and remove all the fees and tell you what your profits are. So if an item is selling on Amazon for $40, and it will tell you after all fees are taken out, you're, 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 you're able to get back $32. But if you're like, I'm buying this for $7. So you put in all the, that information, you're selling it for 40, you get 32 back, but you're purchasing it for $7. So that brings it down to $25 profit and it figures out the percentage ROI that you're making for that. So Scatify does all that math for you so you can see it right there on the screen, what the profit is. Um, so yes, that it does include all the fees. You can even put in your inbound shipping costs and, and all of that. So have you ever sourced chain stores like Dollar General, Family Dollar, and Dollar Tree and found profitable replens? Yes, I have. Um, I've been able. I've probably had the most success with Dollar General, um, Family Dollar, and Dollar Tree. Have been, you know, they've been okay. A lot of times you can create your own bundles that are that are unique bundles um, from from Family Dollar and Dollar Tree. But Dollar General has probably been my most success uh, when, when it comes to retail arbitrage. Karen says, is there a way to get ungated in an entire category? When I try to add a product in a category, they are usually a subcategory and I cannot find a product that will allow ungating in an entire category. Um, so if you go to fulltimefba.com forward slash what can I sell, I think that forwards you to a, a list of all the main categories which you can apply there um, to be approved to sell those items. So again, fulltimefba.com forward slash what can I sell? And on that page, you can apply for the entire category. Now, no matter what category you apply to to get approved in, there will still be individual brands within that category that might still be gated or restricted. So it won't open up the entire category, but it will uh, open up probably 80, 85% of that category for you to be able to sell. Are Amazon and the retail stores okay with us reselling products and having the condition is new? Don't we have to say it's used if we don't have a contract with these stores? Can we get in trouble with Amazon? So if you go to fulltimefba.com forward slash conditions, I think is the link, you will see Amazon's condition guidelines. You want to sell an item as new if it really is in new condition. Now, new does not mean open package but never used that's not new a new item is always gift quality condition brand new in the box still sealed you know all this stuff is intact brand new condition and yes you can sell something in new condition in in most categories as long as you're approved to sell it now the one category i would shy away from picking something and selling it in new condition is books and books is because have you ever seen a video of the inside of an Amazon warehouse? These books and items go on a conveyor belt. They get dinged around. They get shipped in in you know like they get shipped in a a, a cardboard thing and they they arrive and they're all damaged and stuff and they just don't take a really good care of their books. So I would never sell a book in new condition. Um, I would sell it in like new condition. 
unless you're buying directly from the manufacturer and you're able to get the book in brand new condition, then I would shrink wrap it or poly bag it so to try to protect it. But you know what? If if this book was in new condition and I did this, it's now in used condition. And most of the books that people buy to resell on Amazon, they have no proof that the book was never opened and, and it's automatically used. So books is the only category I would shy away from selling something is new. I would just say like new. So those are my thoughts on that. Odette says, if you see an item that looks like it might be profitable, but it says they don't have the, all the information to tell you what your profit would be, do you take a chance? Most of the time, I do not take a chance on that. It could be profitable, but I base all my decisions when it comes to sourcing my inventory on items that have the most information. I want to buy an item that I can look on Keepa, um, look at a Keepa graph, and I can see over the past 180 days, the average price has been this. Over the past 180 days, the sales rank has been this, and I know what to expect. And if something does not have a proven track record, I usually shy away from it. You know, every once in a while, I'll have a hunch. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. It's a problem, you know, it might even out in the end, but 99% of my inventory is probably based on, you know, a good track record, a good sales record, good uh, sales rank record. So, um, you know, I, the more information you have to make that decision, the better you have in the long run. I wish I could hang out with you continually and answer all these questions, but thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. Again, to learn more about this course, Jumpstart Amazon, go to fulltimefba.com forward slash jumpstart. Save 50 bucks on the cost of the course by using the coupon code SAVE50. The, if you go to check out fulltimefba.com forward slash jumpstart, you can find out all the information you need to know about this course and how it can help you in your Amazon FBA business. And I'm excited to see where this takes you. I'm excited about, you know, you increasing your inventory. Hopefully I've been able to give you enough information that you know better now where to look, how to find more inventory, how to increase your inventory, which will in turn increase your overall sales and profits. Well, thanks again for hanging out with me today. God bless everybody. I'll see you guys on our next webinar. And I will see you at fulltimefba.com uh, with new blog posts, new videos posted there often to help you turn part-time hours into a full-time income with Amazon. I'm going to end the recording and we will uh, we'll see you again next time. Bye.